What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Four Dads. Um, it has been a what would you call it? Like a, a dry streak of golf. We haven't really been touching our golf clubs very much. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. I, I'll be honest. I really haven't been watching a lot of golf. I watched a few clips of the pro of the pro core tournament uh, over at Silverado. Yeah. Um, man, for the locals, like people that I play with all the time, they were disappointed with the tournament. They're like, the tournament suck. Really? They, they didn't have the concerts this year. They didn't have the um, like the festivals that that kind of made it fun. The you know when it was the Fortnite and uh, the Safeway and all this other cool stuff that was always going around. I mean, like again, we we've, we've spoken on this a few times, but I mean Napa Silverado is a great resort. It's a mm-hmm, lot of fun. Mm-hmm. There's a right. it's super secluded. You know, it's just kind of out there. It's a really fun place to be. be two beautiful courses, um, but because the tournaments have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger every year. Basically what's happened is, is like, they can't fit a lot of the grandstands in there. There's Mm. really, there's really not a lot of room to walk and it becomes a problem if, because it is a tighter, because it is a tight fairway, there's not a lot of, uh, like I mentioned, there's not a lot of walkway for the, for the patrons to kind of be around. So Mm -hmm. if someone hits Mm -hmm. one left and you get hit, like it's tough for a cart to get through. I mean, before we had out Alina, like, I mean, Isis and I went a couple times and it's, it's bumping shoulder to shoulder. It was kind of like how it Dang. was. It was kind of like how it was when, when we went to Pebble, right. In certain, really? in certain parts, it was uh, just really shoulder to shoulder in certain areas, like, especially at that turn where it goes from 17 to 18, I think was where it was at. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, That's but, cool. uh, but this year, yeah, man, I mean, a couple of my buddies, caddied for for for, or volunteered to caddy for some of the players that had made it through exemptions uh Mm. through amateur tournaments which was super cool yeah um but they were just saying they're like it was empty like they're like this it was completely different just looked like it was like a regular ncaa tournament over there just that's yeah that's that's wild to hear because like i don't know like for me i have a reason why i've been struggling with getting back on the golf train that I had been on the last like three and a half, four plus years. And it's silly to say, but it's college football 25. I've been waiting for this game to come out for a decade and they finally brought one back and I'm actually pretty decent at it. But I thought that was just me, right? The game came out. I've been, I've been like more interested in playing that in like we have online dynasty and stuff with other friends. So it's a lot of fun to kind of play around with other people, but I saw this actual post. Oh, we lost Julio. Hopefully he'll pop on back in a minute. There he is. And he's back. All right, cool. Super weird. I don't know what just happened. (laughs) I was like, there goes Julio. Okay, we'll come back in a second. Yeah, no, so like, so I saw this thing on Golf Spy literally like yesterday on Twitter. And it was like, there's no denying it. Professional golf is entering a massive crisis, in quotes, again. Uh, viewership is plummeting. Players can't reach an agreement. It's chaos. And apparently, Alan Shipnuck reported this, I guess, all the ratings and everything, you know, over the last, I don't know whether it's six, seven months or a year or whatever it has been. But I'm like, bro, how insane would it be if everyone's like, just got into college football 25, like, screw golf. I'm done. I'm ready. I finally got this. I'm not interested in golf anymore, but like, like you were saying, like on the PGA tour, you're in Napa and I know Napa does, isn't really known for hosting that many people at once. It's kind of a smallish town, you know, it's kind of in its own little world, you know, it's not like right next door to like San Francisco or right next door to Oakland or one of the bigger cities in the Bay area. It's still a small town. And I don't know. I mean, like I would assume that over the years since, Silverado has hosted an abundance of, you know, PGA tour tournaments that they would know when it's like a ghost town, you know? And I think it's wild that it is happening now. And also, I've also heard also on the other side of things that they're getting closer to an agreement of live and PGA tour. Well, now they're allowing the Ryder cup to allow quote unquote live players for the first time that don't, they don't have to be in the top 20, top 15 or whatever the 
the FedEx Cup standings are, which is like kind of like the LeBron James. It's about dang time. You know, like it, we want the best of the best, right? And I'm hoping that that means that they're closer to an agreement for living PGA Tour because it's just getting stupid now. It's getting stupid. If, if viewership is plummeting, well, they're clearly not happy with the products, PGA Tour and Live, that they're putting out because it's not the best of the best. But yeah, like what do you have to what do you have to say about that? Because it sounds like it's not just me. I'm not trying to sound selfish, but like, you know, it's like the only person that's like not as interested. Because I I mean, we've everyone knew that this was coming. Like mm -hmm. again, you've heard it from ESPN, you've heard it from other from other golf enthusiasts like us on their podcast. There's nothing that's keeping the fans engaged. There's nothing mm -hmm. that's really keeping like wanting us to turn it on on Thursday morning and be like, "Ooh, wow, like they're playing here." Again, it's a yeah. there's been a lot of complaints from the same the same cycle of golf courses, right? There's only yeah. four mm -hmm. events that everyone looks forward to, but also it's like Golf itself, I think, is seeing a huge plummet because I think golf has just gotten to a point where it's just it's far too expensive now. It's going back mm. to what it's going back to what it was when golf originally started, right? Which was for the upper echelon of people. Yeah. It's a it's a game of luxury, which it is, for sure. right? And I think now with the cost of everything else, like for those for those weekend warriors, for the guy who's just getting into it because he landed his first sales job and everybody told him that, Hey, you really want to create a network, go play golf. Right. Yeah. Um, right. whatever it's, it's just becoming unobtainable now. Right. Yeah. I mean, you go to public courses, you're getting people who are coming, like for me, for an example, over here at my club, we get people from the city all day, like every, every single weekend it's flooded at the, at the course. Mm, and yeah. we're getting people from, Keep people from from the East Bay, from San Francisco, because those courses are just filled. Like, mm. I mean, uh, a buddy of mine, a buddy of mine who lives in San Francisco, just played TPC uh, TPC Harding, and he said it took five and a half hours to play it. Oh and gosh. on top of that, and on top of that, like we've spoken about it plenty of times. And for those of you guys who who are in the Bay Area, you know how ridiculous TPC TPC has gotten ever since 2020. Like that mm -hmm. course is not mm -hmm. worth three hundred dollars. Oh my gosh. Um, and so I think you bring up a really good point and I think people are starting to see it, you know, it's sad. Um, it's sad because 2020 was kind of the, it, it re it, it gave people a reason to want to get into golf, gave people a reason to want to kind of get out, not only because we were trapped in our homes, but it was just nice to get out and just kind of be in an environment where everyone was chasing the same thing. It didn't matter what you fucking, Sorry, it didn't matter. It doesn't matter what you were scored, what you scored. Yeah. You're yeah. just having a good time with a complete mm -hmm. stranger, keeping six feet apart, having a beer, yeah. you know, and just having something that felt normal. But then mm -hmm. people got but then people got the itch and it started yeah. to get really popular. And now golf courses, um, country clubs have kind of always done their thing, but for those people who did join country clubs, I mean Santa Rosa Country Club over here where I'm at they're struggling to keep members because there's just nothing okay. that's incentivizing people to be there. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, same with, same with the, with the more or with the more, uh, expensive country club near me, which is Fountain Grove. Like they're, they're, they're just hiking up costs for no reason. And it's like, people still have to pay for groceries. You're still paying, yep. you know, if you got a truck, like everyone does over here, oh, you're yeah. paying over $120 for gas. You know, you have, insane. Yeah, I mean, you got wow. a sixteen, you got a sixteen gallon tank in your car, whether oh, it, yeah. whether whether if it's a Kia or if it's you know um, a, a sports car, mm -hmm. paying at the premium level, dude, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. And dude, so, even even uh, what was it Riverside that we were gonna play at? It was like sixty eight bucks on the weekend. I'm like, bro. I mean, Riverside? that's Riverside. Yeah, I mean, that's don't get me wrong. It's cheaper on what you're expecting, but from the course itself and how long yeah. you're playing. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Riverside's always kind of been like that, right? Like it's always been a great place to go play. It's just, you're going to expect this little round, but, um, you know, kind of to kind of to go in deeper a little bit about, you know, what we were just speaking about, like even, even the cost of equipment is just astronomically Dude, ridiculous, man. bro. Yeah. Like 
like to pay to pay almost a thousand dollars for a driver oh my god is man. is baffling unheard of like baffling that's a week like if you're doing decent in life like not amazing i, I would say more for the the valley than the bay area but that's more of like if you're doing decent in your life making like minimum like fifty two thousand a year which honestly is probably more on the lower end now uh, with inflation and stuff like that but you're making a thousand dollars a week that's a week's pay untaxed it's crazy and, and and like if you're not even a good golfer it's not even worth it well it's it's not even that like you got to remember you have to think back to when you got your first real like okay this is a driver that i was fitted for like it it, it is an investment right i mean it's just kind of the gimmick of you know getting something to kind of fix a temporary band-aid right Right. Until, yeah. until you start taking some lessons, then mm -hmm. it's really where you kind of feel like, oh, shit, like, now I know what I'm doing. But, mm -hmm. dude, I mean, again, I, I, I like I haven't touched my clubs in forever. And so I just went into a golf store just to go look around like, bro, wedges. These SM10s are like 180. Uh, yeah, 100, 100 and uh, they were 20 percent. So it was like one hundred and sixty five dollars. A club, and that's and that's twenty percent off. It, something like that, yeah. They had some oh deal, but they were God. marked down. But I was still, I was still just like, what? Like, yeah, that's. Wild. I re I remember I remember back when when they were like they were eighty dollars a club, eighty dollars a club. That was twenty sixteen. Well, dude, when I, when you were working with Callaway, like maybe yeah. like a decade ago. I got three wedges of the Mac yep. Daddy threes mm -hmm. for one hundred eighty dollars, yep. and that's like sixty bucks a club, and that's mm -hmm. unheard of. And remember, those used to come like those ones used to come with good with like good wedge shafts in them, like S S three hundred S S two hundred. And the grooves right? were amazing. I had never yeah. had so much fit in my life. They were yeah. so good. Yeah, but I yeah. just I just think everything is just insane i mean even even titles taking their golf ball to over 60 dollars. i mean you're literally talking 550 no almost six dollars a ball now taylor may doing the same thing it's just not it's I not like don't. what do you call it what, what's the term where like it's not like you can't do that for the rest of your life like what do you call it? it's not like uh a sustainable it's not sustainable yeah. for like the it's average not. consumer no the, the only way to survive is in my opinion for golf balls, eBay, unless you're going like the vice route or you're going like the uh, maybe the uh, the Kirkland route, you yeah. know, some some inexpensive golf ball like that. And you have to know somebody in the business that can get you cost price or cost plus 10 well, or whatever it is. And even then, yeah. it's still a pretty it's, penny. Yeah, it's still I mean, even for those that are working in the industry, it doesn't even benefit them anymore. Like mm -hmm. I remember I remember working in the industry. Every rep would look for one would look for one club fitter to 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 market their stuff right i mean you're mm. talking you're talking dress to the nine like mm. staff bag with your name yep. on it yep. customized with everything you want because they wanted to give you the best experience so in that way it would incentivize you to then put put that stuff in front of other mm -hmm. in front of other um yep. in front of customers and so again like and dude this is this is trickling down I mean, this goes so much further than just golf equipment. Like, I know we just spoke a, a lot on golf equipment, but again, going back to the Napa tournament, right? Like, tickets were tickets were insane. They were like four hundred dollars, and there's nothing. There's like nothing for you to do. Let me just double what? check before someone calls us on that. Let me see. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. I mean, I mean, even if they're like one fifty, two hundred, for how many people were actually attending it? Mm -hmm. That's wild. Yeah, let me see. Hang on. So, I mean, just to walk around started at like 50 bucks, but tickets started on the weekend at 225. Jeez. Yeah. So that's Saturday and Sunday. But I mean, still, it's, and again, like, again, this, this guy, who was it? Uh, this guy, Peton. Dude, I'm looking around at Patton Kaziri. Is that, is yeah, that like, Pat, Patton Kaziri. Like, who's, who, who, who is this guy? Dude, is he related to uh, – who's the other – isn't there another Kaziri? I have no, I have no idea. Uh, but... Let me see here. 
I'm literally gonna Google it right now because I like. Yeah, I I have no idea, but again, it's like that's the other big thing, right? Like, I mean, yeah, it's just like who are these guys, right? And I think everyone pays top dollar to want to see Rom to see, you know, yep. Scheffler. Like, yep. you know, I, I'll even throw Tagala in there, JT, you mm-hmm. know, Speed, and none of these dudes are even sniffing the top the top five. Like, you know, it's 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 just not it's just not what it was. I mean. Again, we our generation was spoiled with oh Tiger the, w- with Tiger and Hill. I think and I think the and I think the PGA Tour is looking for that player who's going to be that and oh e- everyone everybody has been like oh yeah you know Victor Hovland's having that is having mm-hmm. that season oh you know Colin Morikawa is having that season John Rahm's having that season Dustin Johnson like you're mm-hmm. seeing all these guys but. It's one no, year, it's no, one and a half, two years. Yeah, no it. one's, no one is actually, no one is actually being that consistent aside from Scotty Scheffler. Like, right. Right. you know, I'll I'll give respect for respect is due. Scotty is showing up and doing his thing, mm-hmm. right? But yep. again, at, I think the question that's still, still in the back of my mind, you know, may come with a bit of an asterisk is like, would he really do this well if? Bryson was there at every tournament. Mm-hmm. If Brooks Kepka was there, if mm-hmm. you know, um, Rom or uh, Cam Rom, Smith or Cam yeah. Smith, uh, who is the other? Who's the Spaniard dude? Um, oh, um, uh, um, Sergio Ron, Sergio Garcia. Sergio, but then there's that other guy, ha- Javier Neiman. Uh, Joaquin, oh, Joaquin, 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 from Chile, Joaquin, Chile. Yeah, Joaquin Neiman. I mean, yep. still like there's some good young talent that moved over to live that. Yeah. You know, I mean, him included, like, it's, it's just, would he be dominating the way that he's, the way that, he, the way that he was? Sure. I mean, we saw it in majors. He dominated because those guys right. were there. Yep. But if it's on a consistent basis where you're seeing consistent wins, like you, like what we saw with Tiger, you know, does he still finish at the top with those guys? Right. No. We just don't know. Yeah, no, I agree. And I mean, like speaking about, or, yeah, Bryson Shambo. Did you see the uh, the story that I posted with Bob Sports? He did a little thing with Bryson DeChambeau, and he was going through a. Bob was eating all of trying all of Bryson's snacks that he has for a round. Did you see that? I saw the. Clip he of it, was yeah. just. He's like, "That's disgusting. I can't do this. I don't know how this guy does it. Get me away from that cart. I can't eat his all this healthy yeah. food. It's disgusting." Yeah, I saw Bryson's that. Bryson's like, "It's good, right?" It tastes like a, you know, it tastes like a fruit roll, right? It's good. The one, the one that you posted, the one that you posted of Country Club adjacent being like, and the number one golfer on YouTube, or the number one YouTube yeah. golfer, Bryson DeChambeau, and he was like, he's like, I didn't even know you guys were here. And they were like, they're like, so now, so now that you're off the PEDs, like, what are you taking now? And they're like, uh, Ozempic and, and Robitussin or something. <laughs> Freaking Murph or whatever his name dude, is. That that was such, that was uh, such a good one. Such a good one. Uh, they're classic, dude. But yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I like we talked before, like YouTube golf is still like on its trajectory. Like it's only getting closer because now who was I talking to? Um, I was talking to somebody today and I was like, when you watch stuff on TV, YouTube, Twitch, whatever you're watching something on, you either watch at least sport sport related somebody that's a really good at something or B somebody that's really entertaining, right? There's not really too much in between unless they were really good at one point and now they're not, but they have a lot of insight, but it's mainly just, they're really, really good. And you want to watch them because it's interesting to see how to watch somebody really, really good. Or they're like Bob to sports. He might not be great at golf, but that dude knows how to make it entertaining. It knows how to like make oh, a yeah. video. All three really. of them. Exactly. So like, that's what people look for. And when you don't have the best product in golf, the best players playing consistently, well, then no matter what tournament, not tournament, a uh, league it's in, whether it's Live or PGA Tour, well, it's gonna hit. It's gonna hit a little roadblock from from time to time, you know. And we're seeing that now. And I'm really hopeful that they end up making some kind of amends. I know they're doing some kind of a um, match with you know Live and. And PGA Tour, we'll see if that actually catches catches any traction. 
well, and let's see, let's well, see, that, but... let's see that goes, I mean, I don't mean to interrupt you, but that goes yeah, back to like, that, that goes back to what we talked about, you know, earlier this year. I mean, we said that that was, that would be exactly what they would need to do. The whole yeah. rivalry, but you know, between, you know, between Tiger, Tiger's league and Rory's league versus live, right? Like yeah. golf, look, there's nothing wrong with the game of golf. I think that the, of course. I think the the saint the sanctuary of of golf and the love that that people have for it to see the game played at the best level, you know, with the minimalist mistakes is like you're always in awe. I think everyone everyone is always in complete like disbelief when they're watching a true PGA player play. Oh, yeah. The ball just sounds different off of every single mm-hmm. club. Yeah, but from the entertainment standpoint, the game of golf is just, it's not what it used to be. Like now it is, now it is pompous country club, high end, you know, kind of bougie show off kind of stuff now to where it's Mm -hmm. like, when you go to it, like you can't even afford it, you know, like bring, bring it, bring it, bring some type of intensity like UFC to it. Like give, give, give it something that really has something that set that separates it. Like if P, if it's a, if it's a game of the people, mm-hmm. let the people choose matches to where there's an 18 hole match. You're putting, you're putting forth a million dollars from each player, putting it into a pot and putting it towards like, I mean, of course with that much money, they probably want to put it towards a charity or right. something. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, think about it. How many people would tune in if you were to do, a Tiger Woods and just a Phil Mickelson head to head stroke play playoff. A Dude, lot. Now it'd be really interesting, especially yeah. with them both being old, mm-hmm. like to see how they play, you know? Yeah. Or even think about it like this. What if it was Gary player versus the bear? Oof. Right. That would mm-hmm. be an interesting one. Right. Of course. I, I, I mean, that's not as exciting as like, Again, we all saw how exciting the match was at 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 Win with Bryson and 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 um, Brooks uh, and Brooks, right? Like yeah. that was a huge one. Um, yeah. But then ever since then, they haven't really just. They, there's nothing that's been even close to that excitement. But if you were to do like a Scotty Scheffler versus John Rom, that's a pretty cool matchup that I think people would pay for. People would definitely travel to go see that. Right. Not only that, I dude, mean, you throw in, you throw in, throw in a YouTuber as their second player. Throw in like Bob does sports with Scotty no, and no. like some kind of like no because like European cause, dude. No, I think people want to see like a high stakes match, right? I mean, mm-hmm. entertainment, entertainment, entertainment is entertainment, but I mean, find a super hard course, right? Doesn't have to be, mm, doesn't down, have to yeah. be, doesn't have to be a super luxurious course, but like let's just say they go to Pasa Tiempo in Santa Cruz, right, mm-hmm. or Capitola. The course that they probably haven't played a lot of, but that's could definitely key, that take they haven't played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying is give them. You know, they get there the week before, they play their rounds, they do their studying, and then they go out and play. No, but don't in that time. Them, no, let let them not, dude. That would be the best. Let them just go out there like a regular weekend play. warrior and play yeah. on the first day. Yeah, that would be entertaining. But I mean, still, if you have, I mean, think about it. Like that would drive a lot more revenue for yeah. for the PGA and live. Because there's a bunch of new youthful sponsors coming in. You got live bidding coming in with better prize picks, you know, sport, uh, barstool sports books. Like, there's a lot of things that bring in a younger demographic that are like, ooh, this is going to be a big one, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just little things like that that just separate it from just the foursome that goes out, plays their round. Like, think of, like, think, think of, the right or not really the rival. Yeah, I guess you could say the rivalries between players, right? Who really wants to beat who, right? Put Spieth with, put Spieth against against Patrick Reed, right? Like <laughs> that. I think that there's still a lot of lava on or a lot of heat <laughs> still left in that relationship. But again, dude, it's just just different. They just have to do something different, in my opinion. But yeah. aside from all that, I think this yeah. is. I think those are solid points. But dude, this weekend. We have the President's Cup coming up. What are right. what are your expectations? What are you thinking? I mean, I'm looking at the team right now of the international team. And, oh, you know, they're, they're obviously, yeah, they're led by Tom Kim, Hideki Matsuyama, Sung J.M. 
you know, and then it kind of tickles down, trickles down from there. Like, no, obviously, res- disrespect to all the other players, but like those are the, the the main dudes that are on the international team compared to Scotty Scheffler, two time, you know, uh, Masters winner, Xander Schauffele, now a two time major winner, Paul Morikawa, two time major winner, Patrick Cantley. I don't think he's won a major yet, but he's, He's won the FedEx Cup. You know, we have a – there's a lot more firepower, at least in my opinion, for the United States team. Like, I feel like generally you're going to have that. But it's played in Montreal, and I think – if I'm, I mean, I could be wrong. I know Corey Connors and Mackenzie Hughes are Canadian, but I think that's it. So I don't know how much of an advantage it is for them to be playing in Montreal, Canada, compared to playing in somewhere in Australia – somewhere in Asia, you know, with a lot of these guys like Hideki, Sanjay, uh, uh, Ben Han, uh, Christian Bezinot, uh, Siwoo si Kim, Min Woo Lee, who's, you know, from New Zealand, would benefit from playing on, in Asia somewhere that's closer to their home that would obviously force the United States team to travel somewhere that they're completely, you know, not comfortable with playing. Anywhere you go around the world, unless it's Europe, they might be more, a little bit more comfortable there. But how often do you, people from America, honestly travel to Asia or like Australia? Very rarely. It's usually if they go abroad, it's Europe, right? Europe or Mexico. Very, maybe sometimes Canada. But how often, like you throw, you throw a 15 hour, 20 hour plane ride, that's going to F with anybody. You have the time difference, you know, and all these different things. And they're playing in Canada. So I don't, I don't know how it's going to work. I know that I think tomorrow you'll be able to catch some of it on like uh, uh, the golf channel, like 1130 PM Pacific standard time. But I'm assuming that United, the United States obviously is probably going to be the favorite, but, and I, and I think that they should win, but with that pressure, you know, either makes diamonds or people can falter from it. And it'll really be interesting to see how the international team, Six together because, again, with the United States, they all speak English. With the international team, they not they do not all speak English. They do not all speak the same language. I know for yeah. a fact, Hideki, he's learning English, but it's definitely a lot more broken. And it'll be interesting to see how they all play together. I mean, what 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 are your thoughts going into this President's Cup in Montreal? Well, the only the only thing that I can think of is why it's in Montreal. I mean, Canada's Canada's going through a pretty rough time economically right now, just with Mm -hmm. everything that's going on. So I think I think this is a way for them to kind of hopefully bring something to Montreal, hopefully try and make a big impact. Right. I mean, it's it's an exciting time. I mean, the President's Cup is is like a major, but it's not right. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those events that everyone gets really rallied around, Um, you know, much like much like the Ryder Cup. But it's yeah not you know mm-hmm. um so i think what they're really just trying to do is just bring bring home some some capital to to montreal with this event um but yeah i, I mean the u.s team is is the clear favorite um yep. compared to compared to to the international team i think that i think that this that this playground according to like just the way that I've looked at the course, it is a pretty challenging course. Like it, it, the layout kind of hits, I think what every player would kind of expect from, from an international course. Right. Okay. I mean, you have, you have the, the, the undulation, you got the false fronts, you, you got the length. Um, you kind of have the, the, um, uh, the fescue off the, off the fair, off the fairway. Right. So it's, it still kind of requires you to be pretty targeted with your, with your game on both sides, right. On both yeah. sides of, of, of the field. So it could be anybody's game. Um, I, I did see a couple, couple clips of just how quick the greens were on online. Um, that stupid fast. Yeah. It, it just looks like they're putting on, on glass. I mean, one of the greenskeepers like dropped the ball and it was a slight little downhill and it just like just took off. It was like, it was kind of, it looked like, it looked like my shots at, at Carmel <laughs> Valley Ranch. <laughs> so do you I mean like how often is that like the most like common clip though? Like, Oh, look at how fast these greens are playing. Yeah. Open, boom. Masters. Yeah. Boom. You know, yeah. uh, whatever it is. Boom. And it's like, 
I get it. They play on fast screens. They're pros. Yeah. Okay, it's crazy. Go on. But yeah, Ugh. yeah, I would not it enjoy is. that. <laughs> um, but no, man. I mean, it was. I mean, the course just looks beautiful, and I and I think they're. I mean, just just from the layout, as far as just some of the videos that are kind of surfacing from people who were there early, it looks it looks great. Um, I I mean, I don't know, man. I feel like if the U.S. just doesn't have their stuff together, even with you know, Scotty and, and Xander, like mm. Tom Kim's been playing really good golf this season too. Hideki's kind of always, a I don't know. He's just a silent weasel. He just kind of comes out of nowhere and he just yeah. kind of stays and mm-hmm. stays there. Yeah. Um, you know, but again, I, I, I also feel like Corey Connors has been, has been kind of lingering, you know, Mackenzie Hughes, obviously we've seen his name quite a few times, mm-hmm. but Dude, I mean, Max Homa, you know, like he, you know, he went undefeated in his 2022 President's Cup debut. Like, I know he hasn't been playing the best golf. I mean, even at even in Napa, he just didn't look his best. Him mm-hmm. and him and uh, Tagala just didn't look their best. They just kind of fell apart. But okay. still, yeah. you know, I mean, you just never know. Sometimes representing your country just brings a brings a different animal out of you. Yeah. No, it's interesting. I mean, I'm looking at the weather right now in Montreal and looks like they're lucking out, dude. 68 degrees on Friday, 70 on Saturday, and 71 on Sunday. And I mean, out here in the Valley, yesterday was like 102. Today was 95. And it's supposed to be like upper 90s the rest of the week. So, I mean, in Canada, it could, I was kind of assuming it to be a little bit colder, especially Mm -hmm. in the end of September. So that could right there have been an advantage for the president's cup team in the winter. Uh, but it's looking like that should weather should really not be a factor unless there's a lot of wind, um, which one mile an hour wind. Yeah. I'm not really seeing. Yeah. I see anything crazy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, dude, my, my, one of my really, one of my best friends who lives up in, uh, I think he still lives in Grand Rapid, Michigan, but dude, he's still playing golf every day at his, at his country club, like snow, cold weather hasn't even started rolling in yet. So Man. if he's if he's not getting it, I guarantee like Montreal is definitely not getting it neither. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean it'll be interesting. I'll, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing it. And I do enjoy the fact, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy the fact that it is kind of in America in the sense that like you know it's in part of North America. So it's only three hours ahead of us. And it's not like nine or 10 where the Ryder Cup was in Italy last time. And yeah. you woke up to find out what happened unless you yeah. really stayed up all night. So that is cool because you can actually watch that during the day or during yeah. the evening and not miss out on it. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. I'm definitely going to catch some of that this weekend before college football kicks in and kind of takes over. But, you know, it's it'll be interesting to see how the TV ratings are with this coming up, you know, you got Mm -hmm. MLB playoffs coming up within the next few days, you know, the end of the season, you got college football and then the NFL, they're back. Uh, WNBA playoffs. I know that's going to teeter a lot of people, you know, that way. The WNBA is dude this year, this year is, I think this is the most WNBA games I've ever watched in my entire life. Caitlin Clark. Just, just simply because of Caitlin Clark. I mean, she's actually, it's wild. Dude, she's first team. Rook, like first team rookie of the year. I mean, putting mm-hmm. up ridiculous numbers and it, dude. I mean, this is getting into something else completely controversial, but it. I just can't believe the stuff that some of the players are saying. It's like you guys have been wanting this girl to come around for so long. Like, what is the problem? Is it just because she's white? Is it because she's, she's not black? black? That's my guess. Like, I, I, well, dude. I mean, the fact that everyone thinks that the fact that Angel Reese, Angel Reese, really thinks that she was that she was like the LeBron James coming out of LSU to go to the league. You're absolutely delusional. First off, like you look like you're never mind. I'm not, I'm not even going to say anything, but, but it's like, yes, you had a good defensive season, you know, Mm -hmm. like, but offensively you're not putting butts in the seat. You're you're just not, you know, Kalen Clark's pulling up from Steph Curry, freaking, you know, Derek Rose prime, like, area codes. I mean, it's, yeah, you you just don't see anybody like that. I mean, the only person who would be, would be that girl, Sabrina, um, from the Seattle team who played at Oregon, who was like, she was super good, but 
Mm -hmm. than that, I, yeah. the girl who shot against, uh, she shot against um, uh, Steph Curry in the All Star game. They had the, the three point shoot off. I forget her name is. Um, I know what you're talking about. I think she's. For, I think she's New York. No, not New York. I could be wrong. Yeah, you're, right, you're, you're right. You're right. No, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New York. Yeah. New York. You're right. But I mean, she pulls up. She pulls up mm -hmm. from that distance. But I mean, dude, the 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 shots landed percentage compared to her is like, it's not even. It's it's not even comparable. I mean, Caitlin's yeah. hitting Caitlin's hitting shots with three hands in her face, and it's like you just don't yeah. see that. So it's, it's just wild. crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's something special. I mean, the fact that her her rookie card sold for her rookie card her rookie card sold for like two I think it was two hundred fifty thousand. Really? I saw without a signature. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's wild. I know you were talking about earlier how like you know getting a driver and stuff like that, but you're using it. It's an investment. Mm -hmm. I grew up on the premise that like, hey, like yes, I would agree with that completely. I would put a thousand dollars on a driver, hands down, over a thousand dollars on a card that I just am too scared to show anybody and have to put in a safe because I'm scared that it's stolen and it just sits there. So like anything of value to me is something that I use on a daily basis or I use on a decent basis. You know golf. You know you don't golf every day, but like golf is one thing. Uh, like Xbox Series X. I use that a lot. Okay, yeah, it might be like 500 bucks, but hey, but if I'm using it a lot, I'm getting good value out of it. I'm yes. not just letting it sit and just be a, a, a cute little like accessory. Yeah. You know, same Stephanie, with, uh, Stephanie may disagree, just like he just disagrees with me playing Call of Duty. It's, you know. <laughs> of course, of course. That's fine. That's their opinion. Yeah. You know, but you know, like a cell phone, a thousand bucks, you know, like you use it on a daily basis. Is it really important to communicate with the world, with your loved ones and stuff like that? Like, but if you have something like that, I've never seen, I've never understood the value of a card. I literally just sold a Mickey Mantle baseball card for like 60 bucks. Someone bought it and I was like, did you get it oh. graded? It was, it was in the case. It was in the case. Yeah. It no, no. But did, but did you, but did you yeah, like, it was like in one of these little cases. It was, I know, but did you go get it checked out and like with a grade and everything? It already came in it. it someone oh, already it. came in it for someone 60 already bucks. Did it. Yeah, it oh, wasn't okay. like a, a top card. Like I've looked it up. I looked at the value of it. So like I, uh, I had an idea of it. It wasn't crazy, but it was still like cool. Bro, I'll I've been it and I'll sell it, but like I'm not yeah. gonna keep it myself. Bro, I've been I've been I don't even I don't even know what I'm sitting on, but my dad and I just had this conversation uh a couple months back. But I have so many cards from that I've collected from over the years, like just getting baseball cards as, as birthday gifts, as Christmas gifts. Mm -hmm. I had so many cards, dude. Like I know for a fact I have a, I have like the hard case Pokemon like stack that has, I know that there's a first edition Charizard in there. I know that there's a first edition Blastoise and uh Bulbasaur in there. Like I you know that I, graded, dude, dude, I know graded, you are set. I know those are there, but the the best part is is like in the back of the in the back of 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 that um, case uh, or in the back of that in the back of that folder. Yeah, I have two Michael Jordan rookie cards. What with a Scotty with a with the 1995 Bulls Scotty Pippen Michael Jordan Steve Kerr like photo with signatures on it. I have a Dennis Rodman rookie card with uh, with the, with the Pistons, right? Mm -hmm. um, I got some good stuff in there, dude. Like I have like a Mark McGuire rookie card when he first got drafted and played on Team USA. Well, um, I take it that they're all not graded. Am I correct? No, no, they're not. They're just sitting. And in, that's like, the issue, dude. Half of it is one getting it graded. Yeah. yeah. Two getting that card back. Yeah. Because I like. Yeah, dude, people people steal them. People steal them from the mail and, or from mail. Dude, yeah, because yeah. they know what the address yeah, is. Yes, they know. They know what's it's in it. It's so effed up, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. But um, I, I got some good stuff, dude. Like sitting uh, on I a mean, pot, the gold mine, man. Yeah, I mean, and I know that they're not they're not bent. There's no damage to them because like it's one of those. It's like the Pokemon collector card. So it was like when you when you bought one of the big boxes. Remember from buying it from like Journey. Remember that store, Journey? Um, not the shoe store, but it was actually called like Journey's card yes, store, yes, right? They had like yes, the yes. magic, the Dungeons and Dragons shit. Like 
I remember get my dad bought me two big old like one with the charge R first edition, one with the Blastoise. Obviously, I was a kid. I had I had no idea what they were, but I opened up all of them. But the guy was kind enough to say, "Hey, like these are first editions, so you're like you're you know you're getting like the top the top of the ones." He's like, "Here's this case, and it's a complimentary like sealed case. So it's like you you have like a hundred pages of of the plastic sheets in there, but it's sealed. So when you close it, there's like a little clamp at the back." And I was like. Whoa, Dad! Just so sick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they've just been sitting there. They've been sitting there, and I think they're, yeah. It's I mean, time, dude. It's time to pay for uh for your daughter's education. You sure. know, it's time to buy, <laughs> time to buy mommy a push present with a nice ass freaking nice ass car. <laughs> Here you go. Alexis just ain't doing it no more. <laughs> but oh, man. yeah, man, I That's know sick. it's. It's so crazy, dude. Like I have a buddy who, I mean, he has a card business and um, it is crazy. The grind he goes on to go hunt down cards and the the amount of money he throws at them. But when he finds the one that he's looking for and then he flips it, dude, Worth it's it. like, oh, totally. It's like, yeah, I bought it for five for 2,400, but I sold it for 10. It was like, what, how? He's like, well, I got to connect. He went back and double checked it to make sure if it was actually better, got a better grading. Da, da, da. It's like, wow. Okay. Mm. Awesome. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. wild. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. Well, I think it's a good spot to, to wrap us up for tonight. What about what, what, anything else you want to touch on? Yeah, man. Uh, how do you how do you think you how do you think how do you think Ohio State's going to do against my against uh, Mississippi State? Or I'm sorry, Mississippi. Um, the Michigan State. <laughs> I think we should do fine. I think yeah. We should. I don't think yeah. they'll have an issue. I mean, I don't know. I hope they don't pull a Notre Dame. I mean, even if they did, the way Notre Dame lost against Northern Illinois, I mean, mm-hmm. that was a little bit different than Michigan State, but I don't think they should. I don't know, dude. I mean, I feel like the only issue potentially would be Michigan, but I'm not even worried about it in Michigan right now because. I don't think. I, I think I think Ohio yeah. beats, beats the brakes off of Michigan this year. They just don't look. They just don't they look, look the same. Season. They don't have a quarterback. Until they find that quarterback. I mean, it is the end of the year when they play, so by – they have time to get a quarterback, hopefully, somewhat ready I mean, by then. But we'll see. I mean, look, like I know you, what you and Steph. Did you and Stephanie go to that Fresno State Michigan game? No. Was that oh, the no, one you guys? That was in Michigan. No, no, we were at uh, New Mexico oh, yeah, State right. when they won. New Mexico State. nothing. Yeah, I mean, dude, that that game they just beat the brakes off them. I mean, they beat them by twenty. Then they play against no, they, AR no, no, State. They no, they didn't beat the brakes off them, dude. It was twenty-three to ten with like five minutes in the fourth quarter. The, yeah, the Michigan had a touchdown in the first quarter because mm-hmm. Mikey Keene, you you know, like when like you had too much adrenaline as a pitcher and your pitches would go too high because you're throwing it too hard, you're just yeah. too pumped up, you know. Mikey Keene was hitting all of his receivers high, so you could tell he just had a lot of adrenaline. Yeah. He threw a pick that bounced off hands. We guys started started on like the 25 yard line, short easy touchdown, but then that was it. And then yeah. it was like 20, 23 to 10. They were on like the three yard line. Fresno State, they're about mm-hmm. to score. Mikey Keene throws a pick six. So instead of making it maybe 23 to 17, it's now 30 to 10. And it looks like a, it definitely looked like a blowout after that score, but it was a mm-hmm. lot closer the whole game until that pick six. Well, that was like, I mean, that was like this last weekend where Michigan was playing USC. I mean, that game was back and forth, back and forth. Mm-hmm. And that was good. I mean, just a lot of mistakes. But then also we saw, you know, the game before that on the seventh it was texas you know texas just came out oh, real deal, man. yeah i mean now and now that arch Manion's in too i mean that's wild <laughs> that kid just looks different he he has like he's got peyton's arm with i wouldn't want to say eli's or I wouldn't want to say that. Realize that. Yeah, I wouldn't want to say Eli's <laughs> running, but definitely the the other brother who was the wide receiver. Oh, Cooper. Um, yeah, Cooper. I think he's yeah he's got a lot of a lot of the athleticism that Cooper had. I mean, Eli and Peyton were just robotic. Just okay. Yeah. I'm here. One two yeah. step. Fire. <laughs> got me right. But, yeah. If it was more than that, they yeah. were screwed. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, for sure. All right, brother. Well. Uh, again, guys, thank you so much for if you've been following us for this long. Again, do not forget to take advantage of our Sunday Swagger discounts, our mm-hmm. premium golf discounts, and do not forget about our local business, 
local business um, producer, Patty O'Shea, take care of him and, and, and um, upside golf. Amazing yep. stuff. I mean, you've heard us say it time and time again. I think his range finders compete with the best out there for, for yep. Amazon cost. Like I use it, dude. I use yeah, it. I love it. It's, it's great. So don't forget to support, to support us on that side, but also we do appreciate all of you for following us for this long. Um, you know, it's, it's been great. I mean, shoot, dude, we've been doing this since we had our first kids and now we're about to have two or I have two now yeah. you're going to, yeah, but yeah, right. I got, I got Adelina's second birthday this weekend. It's Ooh, just that's it, right. times, times going by quick. And obviously you Wild. can tell, look at, look at the difference in I my see environment. It. I see it. Look I at, see it. I noticed it. Changing yeah. table. Yeah. Got baby girl over here sleeping, you know, trying to keep it down. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just enjoy, enjoy life as it comes guys. Like find something you love, surround yourself around great people, you know, John and I were we're introduced through a mutual friend and it's just blossomed into a great friendship, you know, throughout the year. So, um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Life is crazy, right. but being a dad is probably one of the most rewarding and most stressful things you'll ever, you'll yeah. ever do in your life. Yeah, for sure about that. Yeah, man, for sure. All right, brother. Well, have yourself a good one. Take care, everybody. Remember to stay fly and go low.